from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. This is Studio One. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Avery Hagasog and this is Katie Wilson. Today on the show, almost everyone has a Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram account. Many of these people use these applications for more than just entertainment. We'll talk to a journalist who uses social media sites as a tool for her job. Also, most every young person is familiar with the latest technology. Classrooms are trying to adapt to the new ways of learning, and we'll show you how. But first... A petition is calling on members of Congress to keep making major decisions. Many GOP leaders say they won't be participating in any major vote before the next mid-November election. More than 30,000 people are asking Congress to give up their paychecks. The petition has gone viral. Thousands of signatures have been added to the growing list in the past 48 hours. A national poll shows the approval rating of Congress dropping in the mid-teens. The U.S. economy took a hit in the month of January. Many factories' output and production decreased. The Federal Reserve says severe winter weather may be to blame. Many regions of the country saw above-average snowfall and cold temperatures. Some economics say the recent change was caused by other issues. They say winter weather has positive impacts such as increase in utility consumption. The economy is expected to return to normal in the next few months. Shoppers use electronic transactions more than ever. One of the risks is having your identity or money stolen by cyber thieves. Credit card companies worldwide are working to make shopping safer. A microchip and PIN system will soon replace the current swipe and sign system. Many other countries made the switch years ago with great success. The new cards will be embedded with a microchip and security data that experts say will be harder to hack. I mean, the really good ones are going to find a way around it, they always do, but you see it reduced dramatically in Europe, Asia, um, those countries, and again, yeah, the U.S. has 50% of all the fraud. It won't eliminate it all, but it'll help reduce it a lot. The United States will be one of the last major countries to make the switch to this system. Visa and MasterCard have already announced that they'll be making the switch by October 2015. Many men fear the uncomfortable procedure of a colonoscopy. A camera the size of a pill may help. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a device for patients who have trouble completing colonoscopies. The pill has two cameras that transmit large images to computers for about 10 hours. Analysts estimate the sales of the pill to reach more than $60 million in North America by 2019. One analyst says the pill will be around $500. That's about one-eighth of the cost that it is now. The tiny camera is approved for use in 80 other countries, including Japan and Europe. The current generation of students is immersed in technology. Most carry technology with them at all times. Classrooms are adapting to the new style of learning. Technology is everywhere. In the past decade, technology has even entered the classroom. I use it daily. Today, according to a university study, more than half of students regularly use a laptop or tablet in class. Professor Tim Pash sees many benefits to this growth. Technology can be used to focus the mind. It can be used to gather research in a very measured and conscientious way. Beyond the obvious benefits, many argue technology is nothing but a distraction. It's much more difficult to have the self-discipline when we're using technology to actually use it as a means of focusing our efforts into productive forms of outlet. Stepping out into a university campus, you'll often find a mix of emotions towards technology in the classroom. Some teachers ban the use of electronics altogether. I don't think it's fair for everybody, especially for people that maybe are slower riders or like it's easier for them to focus if they know they're getting all the information down. Professors like Dr. Pash believe the use of technology in the classroom will continue to grow. I think that technology is becoming more ubiquitous in the classroom. I believe that classrooms will continue to become smart. Some teachers discount technology while others embrace it. If this past decade is any indication for technological advance, down the road there might not be much of a choice. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Will Biernat. Many teachers are moving toward using wireless projectors, computers, and tablets during class. And that's the news for now, Avery. It is pretty amazing how much technology is changing in schools and stuff. I know uh, my high school is starting to give students laptops and that kind of thing. Definitely, so. technology is becoming ever more present. I know. 
Well, let's go now to Tim Allman for the weather news. Tim? Thanks, Katie and Avery. We're talking about another snowstorm that has hit the northeast of the United States, and areas such as Bridge, Bridgeport, Connecticut, have seen about 50 inches of snow so far this year. That's nearly triple their normal amount this, uh, in a, any annual year. And the nearby port of uh, New Haven has also seen enough snow that they had to close several streets so they could be cleared out. In Iowa, a farmer saw snow rollers in his field. These are a rare phenomena that occur when the snow conditions and wind are just right to roll the new falling snow into perfect little snowballs for anybody to use if they can pick them up or want to have a snowfall fight or something like that. Now for this week, we're looking at the polar vortex. It's a term that you may have heard as it's been getting a lot of attention in the media this year. Uh, normally the polar vortex is about spherical in shape and what this is, is it describes the average wind flow and air movement around the Earth. Now normally it's in the spherical shape and that means the cold air isn't moving north or south but in the next coming week it's expected to change shape radically and as we go back towards the U.S. here a little bit we can see that this is colder air coming towards the central plains and all the way towards the east coast with some warmer airs for the southwest and uh, Alaska. So that's going to change our temperatures around the United States quite a bit in the next coming week. Now winter brings more than just cold air. That cold air is actually also pretty dry, and that dry air can dry out your skin. Our winter season is over halfway done. The environmental conditions of this time of year can be irritating in more ways than one. And when the humidity drops, then our skin starts to get affected, and it, it uh, in a sense, dehydrates. These cold and dry winter conditions affect our skin. Even with all of the snow we have received this season, our wettest month on average is June. So we must do something to compensate for the lack of moisture. You want to hydrate your skin and the best way to do that is drinking water. The other way uh, to do that is um, to moisturize your skin. Larson says one key to moisturizing our skin is to put on lotion right after showering. If precautions aren't taken, skin can form cracks and start to bleed. Once you have a crack in the skin, now you have the opportunity for bacteria to, to move in. If a crack becomes infected, seeking medical aid is advised. An irritating condition could become more than a surface level problem. I'm Molly Offworth, reporting for Studio One. Now it's important that before you use any moisturizer that you check what's in it as some of the contents can be toxic to people with sensitive skin. Now that brings us to our weather question of the week. Which continent receives the lowest amount of precipitation? And the, the, I'll give you a hint, Avery. The answer this time might not be what you see outside. All right, thanks, Tim. Up next, we're going to throw to Katie, who's going to tell us about a man who loves to spend time outdoors no matter what the temperature. Katie? Thanks, Avery. <laughs> This winter needs little description. It's been cold. We found a group who's choose to ignore the temps. It's 7.30 on a Saturday morning. It's also negative 20 degrees. These people left their warm beds to cross a finish line. Because we're in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and what else do you do in the winter? If you want to do races and you want to have these sort of competitions in North Dakota, you have to get familiar with the cold. The event is hosted by an organization called Extreme North Dakota Racing. It hosts different types of extreme events for people who want to test their endurance. Andy is its founder. I, I've been living in New Zealand, I moved here, and I felt like I was a, a fish out of water. I felt like nobody else likes to do this sort of thing. So the joke was that I, I put on races so that I'd get to meet people that I wanted to talk to at cocktail parties. Andy is a veteran racer, but today he is in charge. That to be a good race director you have to actually participate in races because what happens is you learn what works and what doesn't work. This particular triathlon consists of running, biking, and cross-country skiing all through the snow. Racers get to cross the finish line thanks to a pile of snow and gravity. It's a little crazy when you have to wake up at 6 in the morning and you're getting all your gear and you're like, it's 19 below, what am I doing? But by, by the time the race is finished and everybody's enjoying the soup and the cookies and, and talking about their race, it's, it's definitely worth it. 
While most would tell you they are sick of this winter, people like Andy find ways to embrace it. With photographer Eric Brotley, I'm Christiana Dogan reporting for Studio One. At the end of the year, the profits from the extreme North Dakota events are donated to an organization that promotes adventure among youth. And that's our sports story for today's show. Thanks, Katie. Almost everyone these days has their own computer, giving them ability to search the web, write papers, and more. We'll talk to a journalist who's been in the industry long enough that internet and social media had not yet become an option for finding the news. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. North Dakota is facing challenges in healthcare delivery. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences is building a place to help meet the state's healthcare needs. In addition to a new structure, we're also building interaction between healthcare professionals while building a workforce through expanding class sizes. We're inspiring our youth to engage in healthcare careers and exploring ways to reduce disease. It starts here and ends here, building a better future for North Dakota. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. University of North Dakota College of Business and Public Administration. Connecting vision to innovation. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source. Methods of producing a newspaper have changed. Many people get their news through the internet or on their cell phone rather than a printed newspaper. Visual editor at a newspaper, Janelle Vanosik, is here to tell us about some of the changes she's seen in the industry along with the digital revolution. Thanks for coming on the show today, Janelle. Hi, thanks for having me. So let me get this right. You are from um, Devil's Lake and you have definitely been in the industry for a long time. I believe you said it was like 1986 that you started out, yep. is that right? Yep. And it's been at the Herald in Grand Forks, correct? Pretty much the whole time at the Herald, yep. Fabulous. So kind of take us back to when you first started. How did you kind of gather the news? Uh, well, in the, it's, it's really changed uh, vastly in the very beginning. Um, you know, uh, it was day to day. Um, back in those days, we basically had all the stories that we wrote were on like a, what you'd call a 12 or 24 hour news cycle. Mm -hmm. And so um, the reporters had a good time to dig, dig deep, chase a story, write, um, rewrite, you know, get the best sources um, and really massage the story before it actually hit the stands. Yeah. And now it's an entirely different situation than that. Yeah. Um, what were some of the connections that you have with the people in Grand Forks? Are they important? I know you're saying um, like the sheriffs and that kind of thing that you kind of developed a relationship with them too. Right, right. And um, in, the, in the beginning, I guess, uh, we, when I started like way back in 86, it was real common for us to 
like on a daily basis, we, like we'd call like 36 sheriffs just to see, you know, what was going on yeah. um, out in the, the different communities. And that was like our connection. That, that's how we got our news tips. Uh, there were times, um, you know, it, there was a time where uh, like a sheriff called me like personally at 3.30 in the morning to let me know that there was like a big fire, like the school was burning down out in uh, Lakota. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that was something that, you know, we never otherwise would have heard of if he hadn't, you know, hauled, hauled me out of bed that <laughs> night. And so that's kind of, you know, how, how it was back in the old days. Now, um, you know, we still, of course, had that night to go out, send a reporter, send yeah. a photographer, um, work on it all day, get it in the paper the next day. Yeah. Um, but today, you know, of course, you know, we would have had that news like now. I mean, it had been as soon as we it's got fast. there, it would have been, you know, out there. Yeah. How did the newspaper, how does it make money nowadays and back then too? Was it a little different or is it kind of the same? Uh, well, of course, you know, the, the, our bread and butter is always the advertising. The advertising dollar mm -hmm. dollars are what count. Um, so there's always like a fine balance, um, you know, every everything that we do, you know, we like to keep the, the advertising and the news side separate, but really yeah. um, deep down, you know, they're always somewhat connected. Yeah. Is the layout kind of important then, would you say? I know like online and that kind of thing, is it important for advertisers and whatnot? Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Um, we do try to structure, um, we've had several things now um, where we produce actual programs. We have like a cooking show, mm -hmm. um, we do like an arts program, yeah. and a lot of times there's um, avenues for revenue in those shows. Um, you know, people, people of course want to make sure that there's traffic and that yeah. they're a you know, proven success, yeah. but you know, we gain advertising dollar through, yeah. through those shows. So the formatting change has changed quite a bit then over the years, you would say? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, in print, you know, it's pretty much the same, mm -hmm. but there's all sorts of new ways, uh, new revenue sources through through what we yeah. do online. We do. We're looking at a picture here. It's uh, it's kind of got looks like the front page there that they've kind of got. You said it's kind of a newer layout too. You said yeah, just way? just recently. It's probably only been like two, maybe three weeks old, where um, we've made a transition to a new uh, CMS. It's called the Drupal system. Yeah. And what it's meant to do um, is really uh, make uh, the, the news experience the same for readers, mm -hmm. whether they're um, reading their paper on your standard um, website layout, or if they're on their, on their um, you know, laptop or on their cell phone, yeah. they get the same look uh, you know, no matter where they're at. Yeah, I know that when you started, you were kind of telling me that uh, you didn't exactly have a normal computer or any of that kind of thing. So what do you think was the hardest part about transitioning over to this more digital thing where it's fast paced and you've got Twitter, Facebook and all of that? What's, what do you think is challenging about it? Uh, well, it's all different. And of course, you know, everything is a lot more urgent. Mm -hmm. That the urgency is there every day, everything that we do. Um, I guess I kind of mentioned that. Uh, but, you know, we, we rely on, not, not every day, but there are things that we, we get yeah. story tips, mm -hmm. not, not tips that people necessarily are giving us, yeah. but things across the run across Twitter where we hear about stories that we never otherwise would have heard of. Fabulous. All right. Well, thank you for being with us today, Janelle. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Coming up, it's always fun to remember the good old days. We'll take a look at some vintage snowmobiles that are gathering for more than one purpose. <laughs> Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source. not the size of the woman in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the woman. Some consider graduation the end of the college experience. For others, it's just the beginning. And the university provided an environment where I could grow. And many years after I graduated, I'm still receiving dividends from my experience as a student at UND. The University of North Dakota Alumni Association is committed to growing the university 
by growing the alumni family. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. faculty. They're the ones that kind of helped push me through this. Courses are hands-on and interactive. The communication program has so many different facets to it. One of the great things about the staff um, in the communication department is that they love what they do. They encourage you to really critically think and analyze everything you're learning. They just they are so into it and it makes you want to be into it. If you would like to attend a live show, go to our website at studio1.und.edu. Natural disasters strike when you least expect it. Over 2,000 years ago, a city had to fight their way through three. Pompeii is a film about romance, adventure, and natural disaster. Set in 79 AD, Pompeii tells a heroic story about a slave-turned-gladiator named Milo. He finds himself in a race against time to save his true love, Cassia. Kiefer Sutherland plays a Roman senator who forces Cassia's hand in marriage. Milo will stop at nothing to win her back. Milo do, must do whatever he can to save his loves from one of the world's most tragic natural disasters. You know, as unfortunately we've seen in the last decade, uh, Mother Nature can be unrelenting and, and hard and fast, and, and I think Pompeii is the extreme of that. The director of the film says more than six years of research went into the movie. In just 12 hours, the city went through an earthquake, a volcanic eruption, and a tsunami. The mountain also lost more than 2,000 feet in height after the eruption. Pompeii erupts into theaters nationwide February 21st with a PG-13 rating. Many people have experienced a bad boss. Career site Glassdoor.com says one in five employees have had their careers hurt by a boss. A Times article identifies five of the worst kinds of bosses. They name them the crooked politician, the bully, the micromanager, the workaholic, and the BFF. We wanted your thoughts on what makes a bad boss. I would say that a bad boss is someone who schedules you all the time. The worst boss is one that just doesn't really care what's going on. I think a bad boss is a boss who doesn't communicate well with their staff. Um, I think a bad boss is someone who is just kind of know, rude and not very nice to their employees. In my mind, uh, kind of the worst kind of boss is somebody who micromanages, uh, doesn't trust you to do your job well, and also somebody who doesn't really know what you do. Um, a bad boss is a boss that doesn't answer emails and it doesn't communicate with you in that sense. You know, they tell you this is the avenue to, to reach me at and then you can't communicate with them through that. Uh, the worst type would be an autocratic moron. Um, you get people who uh, their, their whole personality is wrapped up in I'm the boss and you do what I say. A comment from our Facebook page from Nevada, Christine from Henderson, Nevada says, a bully boss. They act like this to cover up what they perceive as their own shortcomings. We all spend many of our waking hours in a work environment. Life is too short to be bossed around by a bully. Jody from Fargo, North Dakota says, a micromanager. This type of boss can waste time on little tasks when things could be put toward more important things. Things of the past live on through people and their stories. One group of snowmobilers remembers the past in more ways than one. The swish of snow pants and crunch of snow beneath heavy boots. These sounds fill the ear between intervals of the purring engines. 
I have 15 vintage uh, dating from 1964 to 1973. He probably looks at this as a hobby, while his wife may say different. I have a four car stall garage and I cannot get any of my vehicles inside because they are full of the toys. Could this be? Addicting is exactly what it is. <laughs> Got vintage suits in every color. When we go out, usually I have uh, the old suit on, and it gets pretty funny. It makes you feel, you know, think back, well, this is what they used to have back in the day. These snowmobile enthusiasts stay warm not only through their passion for these vintage mobiles, but also through their support for a greater cause. She was an amazing lady, and I think about her every day, and it's pretty cool that, you know, this all ties into it. Kyle's mother passed away three years ago from cancer. After my mom passed away, I wanted to find something to keep my mind off it, and ever since, you know, it's, I think about it every day, and it's all I want to do is ride snowmobiles. Today is about more than riding snowmobiles. The show is paired with a fundraiser for cancer research. I just think it's an awesome cause. It keeps my mind off it, you know, and ease the pain a little bit, I guess, you know, and not, you can't ever forget. And remembering good times from the past is what today is all about. I'm Katie Fletcher with photographer Alex Dadnick reporting for Studio One. This is the first year the show was paired with the Relay for Life team. The event raised a little over $2,000 for cancer research. What a great event. I mean, it, it's so cold up here, you got to find something to do. Definitely, it looks like they had a lot of fun doing it too. <laughs> I know. Well, anyways, Tim is going to join us in our studio with the final look at the weather. Tim? Thanks, Katie and Avery. Now, earlier in the show, we were talking about that polar vortex and some of the conditions we can expect with that. And it will, in fact, be colder from about the central plains all the way towards the east coast. And it will be a little bit warmer down in the southwest. Wetter than average conditions in the northwest. Now, that could be rain or snow, depending on how, how warm those temperatures get. And drier conditions down south. Now, our weather question was, which continent receives the lowest amount of precipitation? And the answer is A, Antarctica. So, Katie and Avery, even though you could see a lot of snow and ice there, they really don't add that much each year. You know, it is kind of funny because everybody is kind of hating the snow this year, but I like it. I think it's kind of pretty. I like the wet stuff for snowmen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show for today. As always, you can follow us through social media or get more information on our website. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great week. We'll see you next time.